After much deliberation in the made-up studio that is Mr. Kennedy's classroom, we the people here, meaning me, have decided which case will claim ultimate victory. Okay, the choices have been made, so let's get to it. The first seed deals with the Constitution. In the first matchup, we have Marbury versus Madison and U.S. versus Nixon. Marbury defeats Nixon because of how long it has been in effect, over 200 years, and is credited with shaping the power of the judicial branch, while the Nixon case concentrated on one person rather than affecting a lot of people. The next round in this group of eight is Gitlow versus New York taking on Matt versus Ohio. This is a key matchup. It's going to be a close call as these both deal with the rights of citizens, but Gitlow takes the cake here. While Gitlow and Matt both deal with incorporation, Matt loses because the First Amendment is seen as applying to everyone on a daily basis, more so than the Fourth Amendment. In the third matchup, we have Gibbons versus Ogden and U.S. versus Lopez. Gibbons defeats Lopez because it has more an effect on the people, and compared to guns, commerce is a larger scope. While they both talk about commerce, in Gibbons, commerce was mentioned in a more umbrella sense. In the final matchup, we have McCullough versus Maryland and Dred Scott versus Sanford. McCullough trounces Dred Scott with its unmatched performance on the state and federal laws and higher popularity than the Scott case. The Scott case also only lasted a couple of years before it was overruled by the 14th Amendment. Moving on to our next round, Marbury versus Madison and Gitlow versus New York. Marbury will win because its influence on the courts just can't be ignored and has given life to the court's function. McCullough versus Maryland is expected to win this key matchup game against Gibbons because it really defined what federalism is, and that encompasses laws from all over the spectrum. For the next round, Marbury has the odds in favor against McCullough. This was close and could have been an upset. McCullough involved determining if the bank was constitutional, a power of the courts that Marbury has set as a precedent. Thus, Marbury wins the region. In the Bill of Rights seed, the first matchup sees Shank vs. U.S. take on Korematsu vs. U.S. Shank defeats Korematsu because it established the record that the government can curtail First Amendment rights while Korematsu is looked upon with shame now and had a one-time use during World War II. The next match of eight is New York Times vs. Sullivan and Texas vs. Johnson. This is a key matchup, and Sullivan is predicted to win because it had a great effect for what the press can and can't publish. And while Texas vs. Johnson also deals with the First Amendment, it's more controversial and there have been legislation to stop flag desecration. In the third matchup, Gideon vs. Wainwright goes face-to-face -face with District of Columbia vs. Heller. Heller loses because it only affected a handful of gun owners, and courts have ruled gun control laws constitutional. Gideon has also had more of an effect in that thousands of prisoners were free to explain their case with an attorney. In the final, Tinker vs. Des Moines takes on New York Times vs. U.S. Tinker wins because it was a victory for student free speech everywhere and has more relevance to daily life than the NY Times freedom of the press case. In the next round, Shank vs. U.S. will take on NY Times vs. Sullivan. They both deal with First Amendment rights, but Shank will win because it's applicable to everyone, while Sullivan only deals with one specific aspect of media reporting. Gideon vs. Wainwright goes head-to-head -head with Tinker vs. Des Moines. Tinker is expected to win because it safeguards free speech for the students, and that has had a large impact for schools and universities nationwide. This was close because they both involve with rights of citizens. In the final round within the seed, Shank will take on Tinker and Shank will win this key matchup because while they both deal with First Amendment rights, Shank is applicable to everyone while Tinker is mostly for students and that's just one demographic. In the civil rights seed, the first matchup is Brown versus Board of Education and Heart of Atlanta Motel versus US. Brown will have a sweeping victory because of how large an achievement this was for civil rights and it had made a bigger splash in the pool than Heart of Atlanta and not many people know about that case. The next match is Regents of UC versus Bakke and Plessy versus First Ferguson. This is going to be tight because they have both caused tremendous impact on civil rights, good and bad. Baki will win narrowly because it's still in effect and has had more positive impact than Plessy with supporting affirmative action. The next match is Loving versus Virginia and Roe versus Wade. Again, this is tight as both have set precedents in equal protection and privacy. Loving will win because how well it is received today and caused an immediate increase of interracial marriages while Roe is more divisive in our society. The next match is Griswold versus Connecticut and Obergefell versus Hodges. Griswold will take the victory because it started the right to privacy and was one of the factors that gave birth to the Obergefell decision. The next round is Brown versus Board and Regents of UC versus Bakke. Brown will win because it essentially started it all with racial desegregation and equal treatment, while Bakke followed in college admission race factors years later. There is a key matchup between Loving and Griswold. This is tough, but Griswold will win because right to marital privacy covers a lot of issues like abortion, same-sex marriage, and unmarried couples. Thus, it's wider in scope than Loving, which covers a specific aspect in marriage. Brown and Griswold match will decide who will move on to the final four. This is just another tight match and could be an upset. Brown will win in the slightest of margin because of how much it has impacted how society views one another, and school will look so different if it weren't for that case.
In the political process seat, the first match is Baker versus Carr and Bush versus Gore. Baker will win because it caused many states to redraw their districts, and this is a nationwide issue as the federal government could get involved. Bush is much more controversial. Next is Citizens United versus FEC and Angle versus Vitali. While Citizens United is very controversial, it has more impact on the political process with lobbyists and corporations having power to influence candidate choices than Angle. Next is Miranda versus Arizona against Lemon versus Kurtzman. Miranda is in favor to win because the impact is far greater than Lemon. We often hear about the right to remain silent for suspects, which has influenced our criminal justice system. Next is Buckley versus Vallejo with Shelby County versus Holder. Buckley is on track to win because it led to the birth of PACs, which are everywhere in popular vote elections. And while Shelby has been involved with thousands of polling places closing down, this has happened recently and has affected a couple of states rather than a nation as a whole. In the next round, Baker will take on Citizens United. Baker is likely to win because it makes citizens' voices heard with one person, one vote rationale, while Citizens United drowns out the people more. Miranda and Buckley is a toss-up, but Buckley would have the slight edge because PACs directly impact our election process, and many candidates accept PAC money, while Miranda is more about interrogation, which may be applicable to less people. Baker and Buckley is another toss-up, but Baker pulls ahead because any sort of unfairness involved will have federal involvement and affects people more so on an individual level than Buckley. Here is the final four. Marbury will take on Shank. Marbury is favored to win because it's been around longer and decides what is constitutional and not, which is what Shank is doing with its case, and that is just too much for Shank to overcome. Brown will then take on Baker. Brown is likely to win because it changed the social environment around us and the sentiment towards certain races was starting to become positive. Its stare decisis value for eliminating discrimination outweighs what Baker can do. Now these two will battle it out for court case domination, and our winner is... <laughs> Brown's case was decided on whether the Equal Protection Clause was violated, and in order for that decision to have been made in the first place, Marbury had to occur. Thus, Marbury wins.